Hello, everyone, and welcome to USMLE Domination High Yield Tutorial number 18. We're already at number 18. This is a really exciting tutorial that I'm thrilled to share. So let's get right to it. This is the high yield question. The esophagus pierces the diaphragm at what vertebral body level? And the green arrow is pointing to the esophagus on the CT examination of the chest. Is it at the T8 level, the T9 level, the T10 level, or the T12 level? Where does the esophagus pierce the diaphragm? And I promise we'll come back to this question at the very end of this very short tutorial. I wanna talk about normal CT chest anatomy because the US Emily is showing more and more images, more and more CTs. So I think it's very important for us to just have a very basic understanding of where the important structures are on a CT so that you can interpret them and be familiar with them when you get a question about the CT image of the chest. So this is a CT image that I'm gonna show that has no contrast or more. So without intravenous contrast, it's a dry CT chest. And we're starting here at the thoracic inlet. And the first structure I want to show is this dark circular air column, which of course is none other than the trachea, right? So this is the trachea. On the sides of the trachea is the, you know, the left thyroid gland. And here is the right thyroid gland. You can actually see, you know, enlargement of the right thyroid gland with some hypodense or dark, uh, um, signal here or attenuation, excuse me. And this is actually a thyroid nodule that's incidentally noted on this patient, right? So thyroid gland, you know, right around the trachea here. I want to just show this bone, this dense area is the bone. This is the clavicle, right? The clavicle on this side as well. And then the humerus is the bone that you're seeing here, you know, more laterally, right? So this is the humerus here and this is the humerus there, right? So, you know, I also want to just say that, you know, the top of the image is anterior by convention. The bottom of the image is posterior, and that's important to remember, right? This is medial, this is lateral. The left side of the image is the right side of the body. So this is all right, this is the right humerus, the right clavicle, right thyroid gland. And the right side of the image is all the left side of the body. So this is the left thyroid gland, the left clavicle, and the left humerus. So I hope that's clear. That's the convention on every CT. So the top of the image is anterior, the bottom of the image is posterior. If we come here to this image, a little bit lower, you know, kind of in the upper chest and the upper lungs. What we see here is this arch here is the aortic arch. This is part of the mediastinum, right? This is part of the aorta. If we had a contrast study, this would all be very bright with contrast. But we do have these calcifications here because this patient has atherosclerotic calcifications of the aortic arch here, right? So this is all the aortic arch right here in the mediastinum. This area here is the pericardium. That's a little darker, right? Uh, we have the trachea here. The trachea has come here, you know, posterior to the aortic arch. Remember, this is anterior, this is posterior. So if the, the aortic arch is, you know, on the upper side of the screen, so it becomes anterior to the trachea here. This structure right here is the SVC or the superior vena cava, okay? And, you know, this, of course, this dark area here is the right lung. Remember, the left side of the screen is the right lung, and this will make this dark area here the left lung. It's dark, because it's air. Air is dark on a CT scan. So this is, you know, aerated lung uh, that we're seeing here. And this, by the way, is these are soft tissue windows. So we window the CT to accentuate the soft tissues that we're seeing here on the CT examination. There's some muscles here along the chest wall. So this is a latissimus dorsi muscle that we're seeing on the right side. You know, we see the latissimus dorsi here on the left side. This, of course, this bone here is a scapula here. I didn't label it, but this is the scapula. Deep to the scapula, this is the subscapularis, this muscle here. You know, more superficial to the scapula, this is the infraspinatus muscle here, okay? So, and these here, of course, are the paraspinal muscles. This bone here is gonna be the vertebral body, right? This is, you know, the pedicles, the lamina, you know, the transverse process, and then this is the spinous process here. These bright areas here are the ribs, right? So we're seeing the ribs right here. And this, of course, is the sternum. So if we come here, uh, you know, a little bit inferiorly along the mediastinum, we start to see a lot of the vascular anatomy. So, you know, this here is the ascending aorta right here, this circular area. This is the descending aorta. And this looks like a circle because the vessels, well, this is an axial image. So you can imagine a vessel kind of being cut, like your body is being cut like a loaf of bread. So if you have a tube, it's going to start to look like a circle if you're cutting it, like a loaf of bread, right? So, and the vessel is going to look like a circle. So this is the ascending aorta right here. This is the descending aorta right here. This here is the main pulmonary artery that then branches to the right main pulmonary artery and the left main pulmonary artery. It's also important to note that the right main pulmonary artery is anterior to the right main stem bronchus and the left pulmonary artery is superior to the left main stem bronchus. They often 
test that association of the of the pulmonary artery with respect to the bronchus. So the right pulmonary artery remains anterior to the right main stem bronchus, and the left pulmonary artery remains superior to the left main stem bronchus. Okay. Coming here to the heart, this middle structure here is the heart, and you can see the four chambers of the heart. You know, more anteriorly, and to the right is the right atrium. This is the right ventricle here. We can't see all the chamber as well because you know there's no contrast on board this here is a left atrium Remember, see how the left atrium is most posterior it's the most posterior chamber and we have the left ventricle here which is the largest here that we can see you know it's the largest chamber here so right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle here and you can see again this is a descending thoracic aorta that we're seeing right here okay this of course this is a muscle i just want to highlight i didn't mention this already this is the rib here this is the serratus anterior muscle right they lie you know adjacent to the ribs so that's the serratus anterior muscle that we're seeing there if we come down here to this image in the soft tissue windows this again i, I mentioned this is a thoracic vertebral body here right we have the ribs coming in here you know these are the rhomboid muscles that are right around you know the paraspinal muscles this structure that I'm pointing out in the green is the IVC. This is the inferior vena cava, right? This pierces the diaphragm at the T8 vertebral body level, right? So the IVC pierces the, uh, the, uh, the diaphragm at the T8 vertebral body level. This here uh, are just are, are, is a rib, essentially. I just want to show that. And this structure here is the esophagus, right? So this structure here, that's posterior, but sort of anterior to the descending thoracic aorta, but you know, kind of posterior to the heart here is the esophagus, right? And the esophagus pierces the diaphragm at the T10 vertebral body level, right? So that's important. The aorta pierces the esophagus, uh, excuse me, the diaphragm at the T12 vertebral body. So it's T8, T10, T12, right? IVC at T8, the esophagus at T10, and the aorta at T12. And it's also important to remember that diaphragm is innervated by uh, the phrenic nerve, which is given off by the C3, C4, and C5 fibers, right? So oftentimes you can have, like, for example, a patient can have acute cholecystitis and pain in the peritoneal cavity, and it could be uh, sort of referred pain to the shoulder. And that's because of the innervation of the phrenic nerve that gives, you know, fibers off the shoulder. The shoulder can be given off by C5, right? So you can often have that appearance, and that explains the referred pain that we sometimes see. Now, I'm changing the CT to the lung windows now. So now we We've accentuated the lung parenchyma here, right, uh, to look at the lungs. And of course, this bone here is a sternum labeled with S. And this is the right lung. This is the left lung. And you're seeing all these bright areas, these linear areas within the lung that are totally normal. This is part of the bronchovascular bundle. The uh, bronchial or the airway and the vessel all run together in the lung to sort of perfuse the lung and to give nutrients to the lungs, right? So this is another image here, which I think shows the bronchovascular bundle a little better. This is an air column here along the bronchial, and right next to it is, uh, you know, this dense bright area, which is the vessel, right? So this is known as the bronchovascular bundle uh, that we see. And these are just all normal areas. These linear bright areas are all just normal bronchovascular bundle that we're seeing throughout the lung parenchyma. Notice it's nice and dark and black as it should be because this represents air. This is air in the right lung, air in the left lung. Of course, this structure here along the heart, um, that, you know, this fibrous tissue, this is the pericardium, right? This is the pericardium that we're seeing right there. This is just, you know, an image of the heart and the lungs here. I just wanted to show this. I want to show these linear lines here, right? So this line here is the major fissure. And you can see this line here also, that's the major fissure. The major fissure divides the left upper lobe from the left lower lobe on the left side. And on the right side, the major fissure divides the left lower lobe from both the right upper and right middle lobe. So remember, there's three lobes on the right side. There's a right upper, a right middle, and a right lower lobe. There's only two lobes on the left side, the left upper and the left lower lobe, right? So because the heart occupies part of, you know, the space that is within the left, you know, lung, right? So the lingula, which is still part of the left upper lobe, is sort of a homologue of the right middle lobe, right? So the lingula is part of the left upper lobe. So we see the major fissure there. And this is the sagittal image of the CT in the left lung shows the fissure very well. So this dense bright line is the major fissure dividing the right, the, excuse me, the left upper lobe from the left lower lobe here, right? So this is the left upper lobe here. This is the left lower lobe divided by this major fissure here. If we look at the right lung, we can see this is the major fissure, right? So this is the major fissure. Uh, and this is the right lower lobe here. And we have the right upper lobe and the right middle lobe here. So this 
line here is the minor fissure, right? This horizontal fissure is a Ryan minor fissure that divides the right upper lobe. And we're only seeing part of the right, the right upper lobe isn't this small, but we're seeing the right upper lobe being divided uh, by the minor fissure from the right upper lobe and the right middle lobe here, right? So this area here is a right middle lobe. This is the right upper lobe and this is the right lower lobe here, right? So I hope that's clear in terms of the anatomy of the fissure. And this, you know, I just want to show this last image here through the, so we're going back, coming back to soft tissue. And I want to just focus on some of the paraspinal muscles. We talk about this muscle being the rhomboid muscles. This is the trapezius muscle here on the right, trapezius on the left. Again, this is the infraspinatus right here, infraspinatus. This here is a subscapularis, deep to the scapula, subscapularis, deep to the scapula. Of course, these are the ribs here, these bright structures, the sternum. This is the heart. We have a calcification within one of the coronary vessels. And of course, this is the vertebral body. So uh, I think if you know those structures, I think those are the fundamental structures that you should know on a CT chest examination. I think you'll have a nice overview of what to expect, you know, when you're looking at and interpreting a CT exam, when you're looking at abnormal uh, things that occur in the CT of the chest. So I want to come back to the high yield question. The esophagus pierces the diaphragm at what vertebral body level? We talked about that, of course, is the T10 vertebral body level, right? Uh, remember the T8 is where the IVC pierces the diaphragm and T12 is where the aorta and actually even the thoracic duct and the acidic vein pierce the, the diaphragm at those levels. So the answer here for the esophagus is T10. Thank you. I hope that was helpful. Uh, please join me next week for another super high yield USM elite domination tutorial. Thank you so much for your attention.